So, if I gave you £100 in beefy banknotes to spend on your project, where in the design process would you invest the most amount of your money so you could guarantee a return on your investment? I'm talking about grades here. When it comes to tackling a project, it's easy to fall into the trap of focusing most of our attention on our final designs. But just like an iceberg, it's important to recognize that beneath the surface lies a vast ocean of creative exploration, and it's actually here where most of that exploration takes place. This is also where the bulk of your grades are earned, so it's where you want to be investing your time and effort so you can cash in later when it comes to your assessments. See your sketchbook as premium real estate, where every element you include has to earn its place to be there. Every single image you stick into your sketchbook has a job to do, and that job is to either give you ideas or gain your marks, or preferably both. You really need to show how your research is influencing your own work, both for AS and A-level art grading criteria and for BTEC Art and Design's level two and three quals. You do this through written and visual notes, so through annotation and drawing ideas, making sure you show how they relate. I see so many students gather loads and loads of images like a big, beautiful scrapbook of pictures, but these don't get you any grades. And by doing this, you're just collecting and you're neglecting to embrace the power of reflection. You fill in pages, but those pages aren't earning you anything because you're not reflecting on why you're sticking that image into your sketchbook or exploring the ideas that they're evoking. And the absolute worst thing I see students do is put little sticky notes on pages, saving them for things that they're going to research later. This is an absolutely pointless exercise and it'll only make your life harder. You need to let your research guide your ideas as you follow along, like a journey towards your final design. All you're doing by leaving blank pages is to break the flow of your project and you're filling in the pages just for the sake of it because you know you need to. It's no wonder you hate research and annotation. Doing it that way just makes it a boring job to complete rather than a really exciting phase of the development process where you begin to explore lots of possibilities and direction to take your work in. So let's start by looking at what you're doing wrong. Here's an example page from a typical sketchbook for the Alfred Hitchcock movie poster project that you can download in the description box below. So what we've got here is a page full of images. They're posters from different Alfred Hitchcock films. And the annotation itself is about just talking about, you know, the background of Alfred Hitchcock, which really gets you no marks. What we're looking to do is show how this is given as ideas. And this page doesn't do that at all. It just basically describes what's on the page and that's not enough. So we've got things about him pioneering the techniques of suspense and thrillers. Each poster uses a different font. They all have text and images. These are images of Hitchcock posters. You don't need to write that, already know that they're Hitchcock posters. It's what ideas is it giving you? That's the important thing. So this is a typical page that has basically earned you no grades. And really, it's not even working as a, as a prompt for ideas for you anyway. So this is a waste of time. So let's have a look at what we can do. First of all, we've got pages saved typography and color choices this is banned no more it's an absolutely ridiculous thing to do and it's uh it just turns annotating into a job to do it's a tick in the box exercise rather than what it's made for which is for you to reflect on your work and get ideas so let's start with a new page so instead of taking lots and lots of images and putting loads of images onto the page we're just going to pick three and I would say a maximum of three or four images is all you need. So we've got the, the birds. We've got one from rear window and we've got another rear window. So let's put in some of our ideas. So what I like about all three of these images is that you've got a double exposure sort of technique going on where you've got an image inside of an image. So I'm just going to draw out a little bit of what I can see. So we've got the bird. Now I'm working quick. I'm not worried about the images looking cool. I don't need to do a pretty picture. This is about speed. I wanna get the ideas down. Now, you won't believe this, but I'm a professional freelance illustrator and get paid to do drawings. 
uh, but you wouldn't know that from these little tiny thumbnails, but it's not the purpose. I'm not making images to show people. This is about me capturing my ideas. So you've got sort of Hitchcock inside. So let's label that a little bit. So you've got a bird, Hitchcock inside. Okay. And again with the rear window, you've got the person. And then you've got the scene from one of the scenes from the film. It's camera with a text. So we'll just label these things here. So maybe just sketch that in a little bit. Again, image in image. And we can put some arrows in to show what we're doing. So already we're just sort of deconstructing the image and then it's time to start thinking of sort of ideas that we've got. Now I love this picture of Alfred Hitchcock here with the uh, rear window and I think with the images of the windows inside his head so it's almost like the building is inside I really love that so but this I really like the film the birds I don't know what it is about it I love the idea that birds turn in on humans so I could use a similar thing but create a new idea so in, instead of having Hitchcock inside it I could have maybe the shape of a bird I'll just do a random bird for now And maybe instead of it being inside, I could have the bird perched on Hitchcock's head through his eyes, his nose, his mouth like that. And you could have, that would be the, through his eye, bird's eye looking menacing. <laughs> That's a bird, that really is a bird. Uh, but we could have that there and then we could have X maybe in the background. Uh, So let's label that's Hitchcock bird. So could have a bit of explainer text. So use double exposure technique. Question mark. Could have a double exposure so you could have something from inside the movie in there movie still so all i'm doing is working quick i'm working really fast banging ideas down these are rough tiny little thumbnail ideas they aren't anything to be precious about but it's about getting as many ideas as i can down on paper but already we're showing how this relates to the research that we're doing and then we can take it one step further so let's maybe look at using some color so we're going to go with the alfred hitchcock rear window image and let's just sketch out a little bit more detail of why we like this image so we're going to take this one picture and develop this into our own idea so we start off with his face lip sticking out and his chin on the back of his head and then we've got the windows I really love that, that you've got the kind of black and white image contrasted with the red, the windows. It really makes your eye look straight in at the um, at the detail. And it says rear window. There's some red here. And then there's the sort of film credits that will go on there. Like that with a white background. So we can maybe get some color and color a bit of that into sort of just help us along with our ideas. So let's get a, just block that in really quick with a marker. You could use pencil crayons, you could use watercolor, doesn't matter. Always find using a bit of color helps, especially if that's what you're talking about, that you're drawn to in the image. If you're saying, this is what I really like about it, then use a bit of color in it. But again, I'm not making it precious. I'm just 
blocking in really quickly. This is just about ideas, working fast, getting ideas. It's about the speed of it means that we can overcome some of our self-consciousness about having to make something look nice, which slows us down and sort of um, inhibits our ideas. We need to work fast. It's been proven, you know, scientifically proven that the more ideas you have, the better ideas you get instead of just going through it for our first initial ideas. So we've got some color there. Now my idea might be instead of having the Alfred Hitchcock with the rear window, I'm gonna go for a bird and have images within that instead. So I'm gonna do like a crow with a really sharp beak, almost like a razor blade, sharp. I wanna make sure that I add that to my annotation. So I wanna do a blackbird or a crow with a sort of razor sharp beak so I'm going to add that into my notes when I start writing my notes again I think it's about the kind of sinister nature of the bird itself so I've got the tail somewhere like this I'm working quick it's not too precious it's still And I can do some research later on some more birds and get a real kind of idea of how I want the bird to look or the techniques that I want to use. But for now, it's just about thinking about the idea and we could have the text. Yeah. Have it kind of part of a bird maybe. We can come to that later. Got the birds and then we could have the person on the, in the film. There's, there's a kind of woman running down the street. It's a really kind of iconic hit shot picture. She's got her arms thrown in the air. She's sort of running down the streets, kind of trying to bat away the birds. Put it in context into this into sort of a poster frame. Let's start doing a bit of labeling. So we've got a crow. Let's get that razor sharp beak woman running scene so we can come back later on when we, it's time to start kind of developing even further we can maybe have a look at that in more depth and see how we can place her and what sort of background is going to be in there we're going to need to just kind of block in a bit of the bird here and maybe instead of having the red just dotted inside maybe we have a red background and sort of flip this idea. So we've still got black and white, but with red. So let's get a mark and back out. Drop in the gray first. Just working quick. Yeah, we're not being precious. We're not making a final piece. We are just pinning down our ideas. Like I said before in the, in the other video, it's about catching our ideas like catching butterflies. Like that, get the red. I really love to get him a red eye. That bird's have a kind of red eye. Red background. And now, just from one image, we're showing our ideas of how what we're doing here relates to our research. This is going to get us marks. Now, you're beginning to create the actual evidence of your research informing your ideas and you're using your research to drive your project forward. There's no need to fill pages with images. Let your research guide you towards your final design. From now on, I'm banning you from saving pages in your sketchbook to come back to later. We're not scrapbooking and we're not creating a school project. It's all about feeding your inspiration. So now you've got some visual notes, it's time to add your written annotation and we'll be exploring that in the next video. If you found these insights valuable, please show your support by giving this video a thumbs up 
and subscribing to the channel for more artistic guidance. Your creative journey is a voyage filled with wonder and discovery, and I'm thrilled to be part of it. Thank you for joining me today, and until next time, keep exploring and stay creative.